A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the media, here representing the entire citizenry of Trinidad and Tobago, and of course, the region and the world. I've called you together today to address a very pertinent and very serious matter involving a Venezuelan migrant, and particularly having regard to certain claims made in today's Express and published. It is my intention to address what I regard as several very inaccurate, erroneous, unsubstantiated commentary in that article that puts Trinidad and Tobago at severe risks in terms of our relationships with our international partners, particularly on this occasion, the United States of America, with whom we work very closely, along with other countries of the world, to deal with the scourge of human trafficking and all the criminality in and around it. So let me share with you uh, some elements of the facts as reported in today's Express under the byline Life after heliport hell by one Alexander Bruzewell. That article begins, and I, it's unfortunate, but I must quote it for it to make sense to those who would hear this conference. It begins, I am not a victim. I survived. I'm a superwoman. This is how 21-year-old a 21-year-old Venezuelan woman who alleges she was beaten and raped by Coast Guard personnel at the heliport in Chagaramas in May has described her ordeal while speaking with the Express yesterday through her attorney, Kristen J. Williams. When I read that line and I read the rest of the article where she is never quoted, and my knowledge as Minister of National Security with the responsibility for the counter-trafficking unit of the Ministry of National Security and with the responsibility for the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force and the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, which all of whom are deeply involved in this matter, it occurred to me, and I hope I am wrong, that the Express has, did not speak directly to the lady, but was speaking and reported in this article from submissions made to it, the Express, by Mr. Williams, who from information available to me does not speak Spanish. And I say so because I am aware that the woman speaks Spanish and cannot speak English. So that the Express, if I am right, is reporting purely on the basis of what Mr. Williams has said and nothing from the young lady herself and certainly nothing from me or any official inside of national security involved in this matter as this article reveals. And the article goes on to say, she said her purpose right now was to live her life to the best of her ability and to try to do what she can to ensure that no one else endured what she went through. I am aware that serious allegations have been made by the young woman concerned to the police, to the Venezuelan authorities who are very much involved in this matter and perhaps to others. But I am also aware that these matters are all under investigation. Active police, defense force, counter trafficking, investigations. The victim in this matter from the reports available to me came sometime previously 
illegally into Trinidad and Tobago. She was found in a bar by police conducting counter-trafficking exercises around May the 26th. Well, she was found before that by the police, and that is how she came into the attention of national security and law enforcement. And she was in an immigration facility at the heliport on account of her illegal entry into Trinidad and Tobago, which was, of course, at that time under investigation. So she was at the heliport. The heliport, as we all know, was an immigration center for the assessment of persons who came in and were detected to have come in here illegally, and it was put in place during the COVID months because usually these people when caught on a beach or coming in on a boat or anywhere else and they are taken to the police station, COVID-19 concerns raised by police officers who had them in the same precincts in the same small areas with them were concerned about exposure to COVID-19. As a result of that, the heliport was established. So once they were found, they were screened for COVID there until the immigration could continue with their normal inquiries as regards to their illegal entry. So the lady was at the heliport. Sometime on May the 26th, as I said earlier, she left the heliport. She disappeared from the heliport. The facts of that matter as to her disappearance are still under investigation. The defense force conducted its own investigation and shared the details of that with the police. It is under investigation. Immigration officers were also present and worked at that facility, obviously, and the police are conducting investigations as it relates to all the personnel who work there and the escape. Sometime, as I said, on May the 26th, she was found at a bar in the Shaguanas area and she was taken back into lawful custody. She was placed at the detention center because now she walked out or she left the heliport, whatever the circumstances, still to be finally determined. And when she was placed there first, she was found at a bar, I'm told. She was brought to the detention center. She was there. The counter trafficking unit, based on information available to it, then deemed her a victim of trafficking based on the fact that she told them how she came here illegally and they considered that it might have involved human trafficking. So the counter trafficking unit, as it is bound to do under the law, deemed her to be a victim of human trafficking. Having so deemed her, she had immediately to be removed from detention, which the law demands, and went into the care of the counter-trafficking unit, which has a responsibility for care in those circumstances. And they made arrangements for her sleeping and living circumstances. This article, in part, one of the, not, the other erroneous elements to be corrected, suggested that the lady in, con, in question was moved from the care of the counter trafficking unit and is now currently being housed in a safe house under the care of a third party. 
I want to submit that that is entirely wrong. As I speak to you now, members of the media, at this time, the lady concerned is in the care of the counter-trafficking unit. At the safe house that has been arranged for her. So I don't know where the express could unilaterally have come to that position. I am in a position to say to you that that is not true. She remains in the care of the counter trafficking unit as we speak. Because the lady had made allegations of rape by officers of the state, a very serious business, we considered from a national security perspective that it would be our duty to keep her safe. So while she was deemed a victim of human trafficking and is being kept and cared for by the counter trafficking unit, alongside that are serious criminal allegations of rape against officials of the state, i.e. the Coast Guard. I can tell you, members of the media, that upon my insistence, and that of the commissioner of police, and that of the counter trafficking unit, that allegation is receiving serious police attention and investigation supported by the defense force because it involves defense force personnel and because it is alleged to have transpired at a defense force facility, i.e. the heliport, which they guard while persons were there on account of COVID-19 arrangements with the immigration division, as I had earlier explained. And at some stages during all of this, the young woman told us, meaning the counter trafficking unit and the police, and as well the Venezuelan officials, because we contacted the Venezuelan embassy and got them deeply involved in the picture. They have been visiting and counseling and speaking and helping their citizen while she's in our care. And at some stages during this, she indicated quite pellucidly that she simply wanted to return home to Venezuela immediately. But because we were aware that these serious criminal allegations are made and the impact of that on the reputation of Trinidad and Tobago and for moral and ethical and legal reasons, we were the ones who took action to ensure that she be persuaded to remain here pending the outcome of those investigations. Lest it be said that she went to Venezuela and those who committed cr alleged criminal offenses were not given an opportunity to pay account for them. The Venezuelan authorities agreed with this position, supports this position. I was in contact with the Venezuelan embassy up to a few hours, two hours or so ago. And I'm assured by the Venezuelan authorities in Trinidad and Tobago that they are satisfied that she's in care and custody and safely so at the hands of the counter trafficking unit representing the government and people and state of Trinidad and Tobago. And that they are also satisfied with the way Trinidad and Tobago has been handling this matter as it relates to their citizen. We were the ones who suggested that they don't take action to repatriate her. We want to get to the bottom of this. And as Minister of National Security, and I speak on behalf of the Commissioner of Police with whom I spoke this morning, we are deeply concerned to get to the bottom of this, to determine whether it is true or whether it is untrue. If it is untrue, well, so its story goes. But if it is true, those alleged to have been involved must face justice. And it is because 
of the possibility of that. That in addition to her care and custody in the hands of the counter trafficking unit under the law, we put a system of police security in place, not to guard her, to assure that she don't leave or come, as the article is suggesting, she's free to leave. She's free. She's not in the detention center. She is a victim of human trafficking and she's in the care of the counter trafficking unit. But because of the allegations and the horrific possibilities, if they are true, we put a system in place where there are regular police patrols, regular, several times for the day. And the police has WhatsApp contact with the young lady through the Spanish-speaking police officers so that they can hear immediately of any threat or discomfort that the young lady faces or might face. We've done that. The article also erroneously suggests, and I don't know, I can't accuse the express of anything, but the bottom line is this article is fraught with errors, easily to have been corrected had sensible people been contacted. People in the know. This article suggests that a habeas corpus application made by the attorney for quantum law firm led by Kristen Williams was successful and that the court granted a habeas corpus, meaning let the body be brought before me. Let him be here. Where someone cannot be found is known to be in the care of the state and an application is made to the court and the court say, Bring the body here. Let me have the corpus. Bring it in front of me. And show why it is in custody. That's the essence of this. An application was made for, by Mr. Kristen Williams' firm for habeas corpus. Application number one. As I speak to you members of the media, contrary to what this article is saying, no order has been granted. The matter is under the consideration of the court. Far from being finished waiting on further submissions from Mr. Williams and his law firm. Just simply not true. And further to that, while that application is ongoing and pending, Mr. Williams, for some inexplicable reason, filed a second one. When that one got before the court more recently, the court frowned upon it from what I am told because I wasn't present, but our lawyers told us. And the court wanted to know from Mr. Williams what is different between the first and the need for the second. As I speak to you, Mr. Williams, not being able to answer those pertinent questions by the court, found wanting legally as it were, has indicated to the court and shared that with our lawyers that he is withdrawing the second application. Not yet formally withdrawn, but he has notified the court and counsel for us that it will be withdrawn. All that has to be done now is the formality of a notice of discontinuance, which has not yet been done. And therefore, for that technical reasons, both these matters are still alive in the court. And for those reasons, I cannot deliberate more closely in and upon them without running the risk, as I think this article has done, of being in contempt of the court, which wants secrecy around some of the deliberations in this or these matters. Couldn't do it. The article also erroneously stated that there was a court schedule for today, the 3rd of July, 2023. That, from the information available to me through our lawyers, is simply incorrect, put differently, untrue. And I can't understand why the Express would allow itself to be taken down that rabbit hole. I can understand Mr. Williams' predicament 
not making great progress in the court because a habeas corpus application is something of an emergency procedure. The first one was filed sometime, I think, on the 2nd of June. And to date, it has not been granted. The second one has been signaled by Mr. Williams and his firm to be withdrawn. So I, on that basis, on those bases, I'm able to say he's not making very good progress in the court. So he has moved from the courts of law and gone to the court of public opinion by a badong in Chagaramas with a young lady, or with a young lady, whose face was a bit blurred by the express in the photograph, and a certain Yasina Gonzalez. And they've gone to the court of public opinion with this horrendously inaccurate article putting Trinidad and Tobago's international reputation quite loosely at risk when we are fighting to prove to the rest of the world that we are doing all that we can to treat with the human trafficking problem in the world when it touches the borders and the jurisdiction of Trinidad and Tobago. That is our obligation. And while we are fighting to do that quite loosely, Mr. Williams and his friends, published by the Express, would do exactly that. So I came here today to highlight those simple facts to you, and I do so quite proudly and necessarily in defense of the institutions of national security, but more importantly, in defense of Trinidad and Tobago, our international reputation because we are assessed on this business of human trafficking by the United States, the Department of State, as several countries around the world are. So let me say in closing, since the victim, as she has now been deemed to be that under investigation as well, so several investigations, you know, her illegal entry into Trinidad and Tobago, the immigration dealing with that. Her status while she's here, the immigration dealing with that. She has been deemed a victim of human trafficking based on what she said. The counter-trafficking unit, uh, unit is dealing with that. There's an allegation of rape by officers of the state. The police are dealing with that. And I might tell you again that the police have reported to me up to this morning that in that regard, she's totally uncooperative, indicating at all times, and they have a written statement saying so, that she does not want to give any information as it relates to the allegations against the Coast Guard officers. They make no progress in that regard since they started. So the Venezuelan authorities, who would have been in touch with the young lady, have kindly consented to being present at her next engagement with the police, hoping that that will provide her with sufficient comfort if she needs that, in order to tell the police who did her wrong, so that the police could drill down into the investigation and find any alleged criminals, whether they belong to the state or not. So, as I was saying, once she's under their care, that agency has provided her in accordance with the Trafficking in Persons Act, particularly sections 37 to section 39. They have provided her with care, they provided her with food, comfortable and safe accommodation, clothing, access to legal counsel. Mr. Williams and his team have been to her on several occasions although at some point she indicated she did not retain them and she was not interested in their service. She said that to our officials. And then when I read this article which said that, and I'm quoting Mr. Williams from the same erroneous article, generally erroneous, but now I'm quoting him from it. I was able to spend a day with the young lady in question on Saturday and she was able to tell me her story. So if you filed two habeas, application, habeas corpus applications before, no wonder why you're having such difficulty in the, in the court. 
because it is only Saturday you spoke to her in this way for her to tell you her story. I don't know the facts, but I would like to know. I heard her and I was moved. It was a very powerful story. So songs like Saturday go on here in it for the first time after two applications. Well, he will have to explain that to the court. So as I continue, we have provided her with medical visits, medication if she needed it, psychological counseling, and as I indicated earlier, visits by her officials, Venezuelans, who are staffed at the embassy in Port of Spain. In addition, the victim continues to receive a police escort to all medical and embassy visits. And the reason for that is not because she's not free to go where she wants, but because she has made allegations against officials of the state under arms. And in the way things go in the world today, not just Trinidad and Tobago, we feel it obligatory on our part to ensure that as she moves from one place to the next, she is safe. However, the express article, and this one is devoid of the pity I printed it, has her in a bar down in Chagaramas with several citizens around from the picture in the express, unmasked and exposed to risks if her allegations are correct and if alleged criminals want to protect themselves from their crimes, she was put at risk on Saturday, something we who have responsibility for her care would never do. But rather than render praise to the counter-trafficking unit and national security, up comes, if I may quote Sprang along colloquially, up comes an article, right, that is designed for whatever it is designed for. But I don't know what it's designed for, but it has the effect of dimini dim diminishing, sorry, the reputation of Trinidad and Tobago in the eyes of our international partners and other states of the world. I thank you very warmly. I deprecate the terms of this article and suggest that it is largely erroneous and that we, Trinidad and Tobago, have, we are, and we will continue to manage this situation with this young lady in the way the laws of Trinidad and Tobago, not the least the counter trafficking or the trafficking in persons law and the constitution of Trinidad and Tobago. And when matters get to the court, like the ones that Mr. Williams took there, we get our attorneys at law and we go in front of the judge and we give an account for our citizenship. I came here today to address the public that the Express addressed so that they, the public of Trinidad and Tobago, will understand what the facts are and be sure that the government of Trinidad and Tobago, particularly those of us here in national security, are acting responsibly and in the way the law demands. I thank you very warmly. I cannot be long for many questions because I have an engagement at the Hyatt. You know we are opening the celebrations of the 50th anniversary of the important institution that is CARICOM, and that is very important business for us. But I have presented my piece, and if you have any swift questions, I should be all too happy to handle them. I have been in touch with the Venezuelan embassies all the way through, and I'm not unmindful of the fact that since this involves human trafficking, we being assessed internationally on the basis of our human trafficking platform, it impacts and therefore I address it in these terms. Thanks. Well, United Nations uh, 
other agencies or humanitarian? I get letters from them from time to time. I don't want to tell you now that I got any particular in relation to this. Um, we communicate with them all the time. But the most important point is that we have been complying with the laws of Trinidad and Tobago, and I am in touch with the Venezuelan directly because it's a Venezuelan citizen. And more than that, I'm addressing you today because I am aware of our international obligations and our international assessments. Thank you. Question. Um, did anyone from the Express by any chance make an attempt to get the correct I can't know. story? I can't know. From the story? I can't know. All I know is as a fact that I spoke to no one about this story before I saw it this morning. Next question, please. Thank you. To your knowledge, are there any other ongoing investigations into similar claims of rape? I'm not aware of any because if I had been aware of any, I would have treated it with the verve and the vigor and the concern that I hope I have communicated to you in this one. Is there CCTV camera footage available or are the cameras available? You are quite right. I can't go into too much details. Those matters are under active investigation. The consequences it is determined that the, the migrant is, has misled the, the government in the claims. There are no other consequences. No consequences. No, that's not a consequence of the migrant misleading anybody. If the stories turn out to not be true, I'll be a very relieved and happy man. That's as far as it goes. And now I'll be able to say with public confidence and in public that the allegations made against officials of the state was on this occasion wholly untrue. Thank you all very much. Good luck. Yes, Mr. Levant. Yes. I don't, I don't know if we are speaking about the same conference. I recall the head of the gender-based violence team of the police service, senior superintendent Guy Allen, and a number of other persons from immigration from the counter trafficking unit one Saturday morning, I thought it was had a press conference when this matter came up. And the matter came up because at a joint select committee, someone suggested that the same young lady had left the heliport. And I use the word left very genetically because I don't want to impose my own thoughts on an ongoing investigation. And the entire panel P of officials from national security had a press conference, which I listened to. And I seem to recall senior superintendent Guy Allen saying that they had, up to that point, made no advances or progress with the allegations. They, up to that point, found no evidence of sexual assault or rape and that sort of thing. Not that, as you suggested, that the investigation was closed. For me to accept that, I'll have to see it again, and you'll have to show me that. But I don't think so. I think I saw the same press conference. I never thought she said it was closed, because it is not closed. Couldn't possibly be closed. And she's far too senior and experienced an officer to have said that. So I verily believe that you got that wrong. Like the express. As things go, and the way investigations go, I would hardly be able to say that you have specific timelines. Look, Tobago, the police went across there in large numbers with various elements of expertise to conduct an inquiry with elements of the THA. And I'm now hearing from the man in charge of it, DCP Simon, that based on the flow of things, they'll need some more time. This is how the thing goes. So I would be rather presumptuous to suggest that there's a timeline, and therefore I can't. I would like to thank you very profusely for your attention. Good luck and God bless. Thank you.